This program is sponsored in part by the South Bend Education Foundation. Coming up on today's show, we explore the national teacher shortage and see how it's affecting our local classrooms. We visit Clay to find out how students and staff are starting off the final year of the high school being open. And NBA player Blake Wesley comes back to his community to inspire the next generation. All this and more on Buzz in the Bend. Welcome to Buzz in the Band, Indiana's number one student news magazine. I'm Maya Mason from John Adams High School. And I'm Will Atkins from Riley High School. Here's what's making headlines. A graduate student at the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill has been arrested for the murder of a faculty member. Tay Lee Chi, an applied sciences major, was arrested on a Monday afternoon after a shooting at a science building in the heart of the UNC campus. It's unknown at this time why the 34-year-old doctoral student allegedly shot associate professor Z. G. Yan. The incident prompted an hours-long lockdown that forced students and faculty to barricade themselves in classrooms and dorms as authorities searched for the shooter. Based on witness information, police took Chi into custody in a nearby neighborhood less than two hours later. It's unclear how the suspect and victim knew each other. However, a police spokesman said that taking the suspect alive gives them, quote, the opportunity to figure out why and even the how the shooting happened. In addition to first degree murder, she is charged with possession of a gun on educational property, which is also a felony. A Northbridge High School junior died in a car crash early Saturday morning. The Elkhart Sheriff's Office says for some unknown reason, a Nissan was stopped in the middle of US 20 facing near East County Road 31. Just before 1 a.m., the Volvo was traveling the opposite direction on the same road. The driver's seat of the Nissan was unoccupied, and the 17-year-old passenger was standing in the road when he was struck and killed by the Volvo. The victim, Elijah Coran of Goshen, was pronounced dead at the scene. Middlebury Community Schools released a statement over the weekend saying the community's thoughts and prayers are with Coran's friends and family. Counselors are available at school throughout the week to help students who may need support. The accident remains under investigation. The global medical community is on high alert due to the emergence of a new COVID variant, now referred to as the Parola variant. While its current impact on public health remains limited, experts are investigating its distinctive properties, including its potential to circumvent immunity provided by previous infections and other vaccines. Its symptoms are much like a common cold or flu, with fever, cough, fatigue, and respiratory complications. Its presence has created concerns over increased infectivity in vaccinated individuals compared to earlier strains. Experts are cautiously optimistic that current vaccination efforts can still offer some level of protection. Public health measures, vaccination protocols, and following health care guidelines are strongly recommended to address the evolving situation. As of May, 51,000 teachers across the country have quit. This has created a teacher shortage in the U.S. and South Bend is no different. Jeremiah Thompson takes a closer look at the issue. Uh, we have companies had different American classrooms are losing 300,000 teachers a year. Riley High School principal Sean Henderson lists some of the reasons why. Some of the reasons with teacher shortages, one, it's, it's salary, right? Uh, being an educator does not pay you very well. The reward is when you can see our students being successful. Um, some of the other things, a lot of people are just not going into education. And so we need to find a way to encourage our students to get back into education. The reasons why people aren't going into teaching anymore are because the banning of the books, the stream of LGBTQ, and the whitewash of history, and more. At the end of the day, it's tough on our students. When there aren't enough teachers to fill all the positions, it can create hardships for the teacher to remain. So the teacher shortage is also just an education shortage where we have uh, not enough social workers, school counselors, principals, and teachers. And so we're constantly helping each other out. Despite this, teachers who do stay say there are still plenty good reasons to remain. So I really enjoy teaching because I get to know the students and have great relationships with them. And then I feel like my content is fun. Uh, and I've got students in the background throwing paper airplanes. 
for aerospace class. And so we'll do things like that and just get up and hands-on projects, which I really enjoy. Here in South Bend, Mr. Henderson says they are doing some things to try and attract more teachers. The things that um, our district is doing to help with teacher shortages, they, they hold a number of job fairs. Um, that opportunity is put out there. We post a lot of different, different things on social media. So our number one goal is to try to attract those that are just qualified to be within South Bend and to be within, um, to give our students the best that they can receive. To all the teachers who have stuck around, we are glad to have you and hope we have more teachers joining the South Bend Community School soon. For Buzz in the Bend, I'm Jeremiah Thompson. Meet you half, meet me halfway. The South Bend Empowerment Zone will continue throughout the 2025 to 2026 school year. The move came after the boards of South Bend Community Schools and the zone approved a continuance. The Empowerment Zone is a model created for Navarre Middle School and Colquillard, Harris, Warren, and Wilson Elementary Schools to help them turn around their academic performance. Created in 2019, the schools are still part of the South Bend School District, but they operate with an academic independence and are managed by a nonprofit board. The move was originally made to avoid potential state takeover or closure of the middle school. It also allows zone administrators to make decisions regarding spending, curriculum, and school schedules. The continuance does not automatically renew after the 2025 to 2026 school year. At that point, the zone may return to SBCIC's governance or it could be renewed by a board vote again. In the spring, it was announced that Clay High School would be closing at the end of the 2023 to 2024 school year. Our Clay reporter, L. Eisenhart, brings a story on how the final year is starting off. Thank you. As someone who has been going to Clay High School for my four years of high school, it's very upsetting knowing that they're shutting down and my underclassmen peers don't get to have the same experience that I did. Many students are having a tough time putting what they think into words. Can I cough? Other people are feeling a little anxious with all the other unknown changes coming. Kids have social anxiety, have issues making friends, or might just be lonely the rest of the years there. And freshmen who come here are going to be a lot more confused because then they have to learn this school, and then they have to learn a new school over again. A lot of people are worried about how this affects school transportation. It will definitely take longer. I'm not really a car and bus rider. I'm usually driven here by car and all that, so I don't really know how buses here work that well, but I know they take a while. At least my first two years, they did take a while. A lot of the teachers, like Kelly Rock, are not just being affected by finding a new job, their families are being affected as well. I'm grappling with where to send my daughter to high school. Uh, the intention was to send her to Clay, and now um, it's not going to be open after next year, at least. Uh. Mrs. Rock says Clay shutting down is devastating. I feel like the students in the north side need a community high school, and that's not going to um, be an option for them. I heard from many students since Clay closing will be unavoidable, we should make this the best year possible. This is Amaral Eisenhart with Buzz in the Bend. Looking for a new computer can be pretty challenging. With so many options out there, it's hard to know which is the best fit for you. Fortunately, we have some experts who are happy to help you find your dream machine. Here's Forrest and Jacob. We're live. Oh, uh, good morning. I'm Jacob. And I'm Forrest, and we're both students in the CTE Capstone IT Support Program here at Riley High School. And together, we're going to help you decide which companies to buy for, for your new system. Now, whether you're wanting to make content, game, stream, edit content for others, or go into the digital arts, computer systems are necessary. Computers can be very expensive though, so it's imperative to choose the right vendor. Let's start with the ones you should avoid. Apple may lead the mobile phone industry, but their desktop systems are lackluster and don't offer a good change if you want to have faster download speeds or whatever else you're looking for. Just like their phones though, these puppies go for a ton more than what they're worth, so you should make sure your pockets are full of cash if you want to buy from them. Now, I do think we should give some credit where it's due. Apple's optimized graphics work great with Adobe products. So the average consumer that is going into this field may want to consider Apple if they want that. HP and Dell will leave you on hold longer than it took for me to get my order at Steak and Shake. I ordered a water and I was there all summer. Asus has wonderful customer support and their prices are unmatched. You could get a great system that works just fine for a thousand or less. 
Origin PCs has a large library of personalization options, so you can finally play Fortnite at more than one frame a second. Now, if I had to choose between these two, I would probably buy from Origin. They ship your PC in a wooden crate, and my pet beaver loves the extra snack. I heard it's a good source of nutrients. All natural, baby. You're right about that one. Real quick, before we go, let's recap what we've learned today. So you should avoid Lenovo, HP, and Dell because of their lack of customer support. And you should avoid using Apple if you want a more selective system for what you wish to do. You're going to want to work with Asus and Origin to get good customer support, systems that are highly personalized, and fit a good price range. So be sure to get one of those if you don't want to be stuck with an RGB brick. This hasn't been Forrest. And Jacob neither. Now back to your regularly scheduled programming. Thanks, Forrest and Jacob. Next up, Reese Kessel brings us the latest in South Bend School Sports. You're entering the SBS TV Sports Zone. Welcome to Sports Zone, our take on all things sports in South Bend Community Schools. I'm Reese Kissel from Riley High School. In football last Friday, the Riley Wildcats pulled away with a win 20-0 over the John Glenn Falcons. Dominic Jolly scored the first touchdown while rushing for 60 yards on 16 carries. Austin White threw for over 200 passing yards with two touchdowns of Peyton Beard. Adams got their first win of the season in a close one versus Logansport, 23-22. Senior Braylon Williams had 13 catches with 160 receiving yards, as well as an interception on the other side of the ball. The same can't be said for Clay, which had a tough loss to Boone Grove 53-6, while Washington, which fell to Bremen 41-7. The Fighting Irish opened up their much-anticipated season at Aviva Stadium in Dublin, Ireland. They won over Navy 42-3. Senior transfer Sam Hartman put on a dominant display of passing, throwing 252 yards and two touchdowns. Moving on to other sports, the Adams boys soccer team had a dominant win over Riley, 9-0, while Adams girls took a loss against Munster, 4-1. Riley girls soccer lost a home non-conference game to Culver, 5-0. This leaves them at 0-4 overall. In volleyball, Adams lost a neutral tournament against Culver, 2-0, putting them at 7-2 overall. Clay Colonials took a win in their non-conference game over Bowman Academy, 2-0, while Washington also pulled away with a win against La Lumiere, 3-2. Unfortunately for Riley, the Lady Wildcats lost against Elkhart Christian 0-2. Now let's take a look at how a former Riley athlete's love for basketball is inspiring the next generation right here in his hometown. Noah Gordon reports on Blake Wesley's basketball camp. Playing professional basketball was always a dream for South Bend's Blake Wesley, and now he's inspiring others to follow that dream as well. Wesley, who made his mark at Riley High School and later at Notre Dame, is now entering his second year with the San Antonio Spurs. On Saturday, he returned to his alma mater, Riley High School, to host a one-day free youth basketball clinic where boys and girls have the opportunity to learn from their hometown hero. And Wesley was just as excited to meet them. Uh, just seeing everybody's faces uh, and then being back in the community, being back in my high school, I want to thank uh, Herbalife, uh, Impact, uh, everybody, friends and family for being here today. The young participants spent the day honing their basketball skills, focusing on essential fundamentals like ball handling, shooting, and footwork. I thought it was really fun, and I thought it was cool that like Blake actually went around and played with us. I think it was like about how I could have the opportunity to play basketball here. One of my favorite moments was play, uh, playing Blake Wesley. Did you beat him? No. But the clinic went beyond the court. Wesley stressed the importance of healthy habits and proper nutrition for achieving success. Wesley started eating healthier after suffering a knee injury that put him out of commission for several months. Fried chicken works for me. If you want to be an athlete, it's not good for you. His mother, South Bend School Board member Leslie Wesley, says that he also used the time off to think about how we could help others. So we have the Wesley Legacy Foundation, which Blake is the founder and president of his foundation. A lot of the NBA players start their foundation, sometimes maybe two or three, four years after they get in. Wesley was assisted during the camp by the Raleigh basketball staff and coaches, as well as the founder and president of Impact Basketball. Obviously what I do for a living is, is train pro basketball players, so it, it worked with Blake. We developed a good relationship and I ended up still am training him now and guiding him to the NBA. So this camp um, 
I really handle a lot of his basketball stuff and am a part of everything he's doing. So to come back here and help him run this camp was something I was excited to do. In recognition of his contributions to the community, South Bend Mayor James Mueller awarded Wesley a key to the city. His journey from South Bend to the NBA court is definitely inspiring. The next generation to reach for the stars. Always stay humble, always uh, work hard, uh, always have God in your life and uh, have the right people around you and you're going to succeed in life. For SBS TV Sports Zone, I'm Noah Gordon. Thank you, Noah, and also a big thanks to videographer Jamal Dukes and editor Matthew Pandori Tesley. Finally, let's take a look at some upcoming games in the South Bend area. Adams Boys Soccer will take on Alina Christian while the girls go up against Argos at home next Tuesday. Tonight in football, Riley will take the field against Adams in a much anticipated rivalry game. Clay goes on the road to take on Chicago Christian while Washington is at St. Joe. Thank you for tuning into this edition of Sports Zone. Make sure to stay tuned for updates on your South Bend High School athletics. I'm Reese Kissel, and now back to the anchor desk. Last Sunday marked the 60th anniversary of Dr. Martin Luther King's famous march on Washington and his iconic I Have a Dream speech. The speech given at the Lincoln Memorial before a quarter million people has become a symbol of the push for racial and social equality. We leave you now with an excerpt of that famous speech voiced by several members of our media team. And so even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. I have a dream that one day in the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day, even the state of Mississippi, a state sweltering in a heat of oppression, will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama, with its vicious racist, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and multiplication. That one day right down in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be engulfed, every hill shall be exalted, and every mountain shall be made low. The rough places will be made plains and the crooked places will be made straight and the glory of God shall be revealed and all flesh shall see together. This is our hope. This is our faith that we will come back down to the south with. With this faith, we will be able to hew out of the mountain of despair, a stone of hope. And with this faith, we will be able to transform the jangling discords of our nation into a sympathy and beautiful brotherhood. With this faith, we will be able to pray together, work together, struggle together, go to jail together, and come up to freedom together, knowing one day we will be free. This will be the day when all God's children will be able to sing with new meaning. My country, tis a thee, sweet land of liberty, thee I sing. The land where my fathers died, the land of the pilgrim pine from every mountainside. Let freedom ring. And if America is to become a great nation, this must become true. So let freedom reign from the hilltops of New Hampshire, and let freedom reign from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the Heine Alleghenies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring through the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Let freedom ring from every hill and every mohill in Mississippi and every mountainside. When we let freedom ring, when we let it ring from every tenement and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old spiritual. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty we are free at last. <laughs>